Welcome to part three of Bluff Body Aerodynamics Lecture Four. So now let's talk about the 3D separation. So the 3D separations yield longitudinal vortices, um, and these are basically where the vorticity is the axis of the vortex, if you will, is in the direction of the main flow. So we call that a streamwise vortex. Um, the amount of circulation in those vortices is sort of governed by how the, the angle over which the flow had to separate. Um, you know, the greater the angle, the more circulation there'll be. And uh, because of the uh, additional velocity associated with um, the rotation of this flow, there'll be a lower pressure um, where sort of the center, or, you know, the midpoints of these vortices impact on the surface. And so you'll get a uh, low pressure region and because part of that surface is facing forward, you get some drag associated with that. Turning to the internal flow, um, this is a balance between loss and the impact of the fan. Right, again, the internal flow is there for heat exchangers to keep things cool. It entails friction because we're going through you know, heat exchanger passages and thus stagnation pressure losses, so no way around that. And if we just think about a conceptual vehicle internal flow, there'll be a flow through a series of heat exchangers um, and geometry that's governed by a loss coefficient. And the loss coefficient y is the uh, pq infinity minus pq over one half rho u infinity squared. This is like what you, similar to what you looked at in lab one. Um, and the flow through a fan um, is going to be governed by a non-dimensional total pressure rise that's a function of uh, the velocity through the fan. Basically, these are always uh, negatively sloped, so the more flow there is, the less pressure rise there is. Now, there's lots of different ways that we can break down the drag. We can think about it in terms of pressure versus friction drag. We can think of it in terms of a, a micro drag method, which is basically an integral-based approach, as we'll see. Or we can look at a component-based drag buildup where we look at form drag, induced drag, cooling drag, roughness components, and interference effects. Pressure and friction drag is a logical division and is usually the first way of breaking down drag that people get introduced to. Um, right? So the drag force is the component of all the surface pressure and the shear stresses that act parallel to the incoming flow direction. So we can separate um, that into the parts due to the pressure distribution and the part due to the shear stress, which comes from friction. And so we can, com and then it allows us to compare relatively easily the inviscid or zero drag case to the viscous flow to see where the differences arise. Here's an example of what that would look like. So this is just flow over a, a sphere um, or a cylinder, but uh, we can see that if we look at uh, case A, which is for an inviscid flow, the, it's you know, periodic or sorry, it's symmetric left to right. The drag is zero, and we see the CP sort of has this this repeating pattern, um, and basically all of the low pressure on the back and the low pressure, or, or sorry, the high pressure on the back and the high pressure on the front cancel out, and there's near, no drag. When we look at a um, moderate Reynolds number. Um, we see that there's a huge separation just past the uh, thickest point of the cylinder. And we can see that in the pressure coefficient distribution because the pressure doesn't rise uh, in the back half of the cylinder. It's basically constant. And then if we go to an even higher Reynolds number where the flow is now um, turbulent, uh, it can stay attached further back before it separates. And so we get something that resembles the inviscid distribution for longer and then eventually still gives up and we get this sort of flat region, but it's, it's narrower and the pressure is higher there. So um, we can see this would have less drag compared to C would have less drag compared to B, um, but A has zero drag. Right, and the sum of the shear stress in the flow direction gives us the friction drag. That wall shear stress arises due to viscosity and the boundary layer velocity gradients. So if we add up all the shear components that are projected into the flow parallel direction, that gives us our overall friction drag. If you've got a body that has no or almost no separation, um, the friction drag accounts for maybe up to 95% of the total drag. But for, for a bluff body like a car, the pressure drag actually ends up being 80 to 90% of the total. So that's dominant, so we'll, we'll focus on that instead. 
Um, and again, remember the pressure drag plus the friction drag is the total. The micro drag method just is the control volume method that we, we talked about in, in lecture two. Um, right, so we previously mentioned discussing uh, calculating drag based on integral form and momentum. Um, this is, it's a good idea, but it's complex to implement either experimentally or numerically. So we're not really going to focus on it too much in this course. Um, there's a little more information here uh, in section 4.3.2 of the text that if you're interested, um, I, I would recommend to go read.